Welcome everybody to this nightmare of a D&D Halloween episode. No! We're missing players. We're losing players. They're leaving the group. They're entering the group. Oh, just like an orgy. It's just all over the place. And um, unfortunately, guys, that happens in a big D&D group. Sometimes people come. Sometimes people go. Again, just like an orgy. Sometimes you come. Sometimes you go. And uh, we're going to be moving forward, though, having a good time. So let's start this Halloween episode, and let's get going here. It's spicy and dicey, so please have a good time, everybody, the best you can for me. Just do it for me, because you like me, kind of. So old, if you're young ass read it, you would end up with depression. Her booty shaking the figure eight, cause I threw the balloons. Five pence for the night, it's only right I get a room. I'm messing right. with it. These people wanna use a silver spoon. Keep a lookout for the baron and all of his fucking goons. Watch I need out. a wench who's gonna slurp up my hog. Don't kiss me on the lips, I might turn into a frog. On my high horse, till my steeds trips over a log. All this fog ain't normal, there's a hag in this box. I get silly with it, I'm gallivanting to your crops, and your daughter saw me riding so. Let that booty drop She's showing me her ankle Had her taken off her socks Till her father came home And he taught me how to box Smoking gillyweed and sipping mead You can keep your booze If you challenge me Then you can join our crew If you do, We be campaigning You at camp waiting on a group Got a cauldron filled with potions I'ma call that homebrew I'm a wizard, a knight A rogue with a pike I'm dungeoning at day And I'm taverning at night I'm a gnome, a dwarf, an elf, and an orc And you can catch me smuggling The Baldur's Gate port I'm a wizard Last time on Spicy and Dicey we found the misfits of Mala who had just defeated Stormcloud, Step Stepfather who had showed up and drove him to Dragon Farm, but he managed to defeat his stepfather. Hello, and they all celebrated in Pippa Park, with Pippa sleeping with her beau, Gaggle, who had then gifted her some money from the park that they had made and said he would watch the blue booty as they traveled to Red Hill. And Hallman having a night with Lizza, the robust girl that he'd met outside during the fight against Stormcloud. The team all celebrated with then Belle speaking with a young boy after eating. The young boy was odd, however, and questioned her strangely about drinking milk. Cyrus talked to a local drow guard, which was odd, seeing in this area who warned him of Roland looking for him um, specifically, quick, and so the group in danger know, once again. On camera, but I'm here. It seemed I'm also present. that Set and Sakura had a talk themselves and didn't know what to do next about the situation at hand, but moving into Red Hill. While Wendelin and Amalia spoke and learned a little bit more about each other's past until Taco interrupted and said that he had to stay and take care of New Harmony so no other dragons would cause any problems. The team all went to Roselio's concert that light and said goodbye to their barred friends, leaving them, Jaja and Gaggle, back in New Harmony at Pippa Park. 
They then set off into Red Hill, where they encountered an old friend, Pete the Monkey, and had to pass a riddle by Bigums, a large demon blocking the road into Red Hill, where they encountered an injured man named Onyx, who pleaded for them to help him. Now, what will happen this week on... Hey there, this is my best ghost face voice for Halloween. I mean, I should try to sound scary because we have players leaving and people milking others. That's pretty scary for us. It's like a scary dungeon and dragons movie. You I don't want to be milked. That does not sound like a good time. Unless this would come in a lecker, you feel me? This is some scary stuff. Now let's play. Also was pronounced ghost face bro. See Sierra, you're right. Right on the money, your costume was perfect. Do you see that? You, you we had Ghostface mentioned in the opening, and what did you bring us? You're right on it, dude. You don't even know. You don't even know how good you are, dude. You don't even know how good you are at playing D D girl. <laughs> all right, guys. Welcome back to this week's episode of Spicy and Dicey. Good to have you all here on our very spooky Halloween episode. As you guys can see on the map, it is open for you in your D&D Beyond. If you guys want to go to your little apps, if you can access it, you can move your little uh, little players around. And as you can see, we're exactly where you guys left off. As you immediately enter the Red Hill Forest, a very strange magical forest mixed with the Fey Realm, seeping in through different pores and pockets of magic. If you guys are familiar with the Fey Realm, Clive, you obviously very much are, and Bell, you've probably heard of the Fey Realm quite a bit as well, being uh, from the Underpole, which is in a Fey Realm adjacent pocket, if you will. Um, a lot of drow in that area, obviously. But the Fey Realm is a magical dimension, basically the origin of a lot of magic, and basically the Allfather, or basically a god of magic, if you will, created that area, and it seeps in through different types of D&D games, as many of you know. But the Fey Realm exists here within Red Hill Forest. Everything around you is red, maple trees, apple trees, berry trees, and bushes. The ground is a very weird, white, salty type of dirt. You guys met Onyx, who is a warlock fighter. He had a scar on his face, glowing purple eyes, very built, very dark, kind of very dark black skin, almost to the point of it being like actually quite onyx black. It's very, it's very interesting. I wouldn't say it's a normal skin tone. Um, not like a normal, I guess we could say a brown or darker skin color. It's different. Um, and he also was bald and had a purple kind of feathered cape. I told you guys of a villain by the name of Bogart Tusk, who was around and seemingly kidnapping children. Hence why, Belle, you were approached by an odd child questioning you about milk. You also learned, apparently from Onyx, that he was milking women in the area as well seemingly scouting them out and looking for children and women that he could prey upon and sell them throughout this magical forest. Some people don't like this kind of stuff, and I can understand that if you're an audience member, you might think that that is deplorable. It is. So, Hallman, you decided, of course, to jump on that as a, as a patron of Santa Claus, and you took the mission with Onyx, and your team kind of headed in the direction. Cyrus as well agreed with you after hearing the strange things about the Neon Knight. However, this is what we'll start tonight's episode. Cyrus looked back at the beginning of Red Hill, remembering what he was told about Roland looking for him. He doesn't want to put the team in any more danger. He takes a moment, he looks at Belle. He brought her back to life, and he thinks... Damn it. He doesn't say anything, but he keeps to himself as he looks to the group again. He also looks down into his own kind of armor and holds the ring of purity. As he goes over this ring, Cyrus thinks about Cressida and how he can help her. He pockets the ring again. And he follows you guys continuously in your journey. You guys then get, of course, to this very interesting place. As Onyx looks then behind you home and he goes, shut, shut up, shut up, shut Over there. He points ahead. As you can see, Hallman and the rest of you, you guys are kind of crowded. Belle, Amalia, Wendelin, Sakura, Clive, Hippa. 
You guys are all just kind of crowded by a, a large red bushes, as you can see there. You're obscured. You're currently obscured by these bushes, and you can see through them. However, there's a group of knights, one of them with glowing neon armor, holding the large Bigum's brother that you guys were told about from the quizzical giant that you guys saw at the oh, wait, beginning. Wait, he's holding him? He's holding him by a chain oh. around his neck. I thought you meant he was holding him, like, holding him up. <laughs> I was like, no, I mean, he's, not, he's not that strong, yeah. But he, uh, but he is holding him by the by a chain wrapped around Bigums' brother's neck. You can tell, though, all of you by seeing this Bigums, he is a lot different than his brother. They look the same, but there's a very obvious big difference. He kept telling you guys he thinks with his stomach. All of you would notice right away that he has a large protruding brain coming out of the middle of his stomach. It seems to be pulsing. A little bit of pus and juice kind of comes out of it every time it pulses. It seems to be connected to this giant's stomach and, and is part of him. It is not a different organism. It is a part of him. So, I am going to turn to you, Holman, as Onyx kind of stops you as you guys get to these bushes. What would you like to do, buddy? Um, well, you know, it's been a bit since I've done this. Um, hey, is there, like, are we trying to get be behind, behind the Neon Light Knight, or, like, what are they guarding? Right now, you can see that there's two roads. Obviously, there's a road downward, as you can see there, and then there's a road going up. It seems that the knight and this giant here... They're blocking that road going up. The road going down seems to be a normal road, just like a regular paved road in the regular direction that heads down into Red Hill, the town. However, these group of knights are go like blocking a path going up. I ask Onyx, is like, is that is that the guy? That's the neon knight. Yeah, I mean, they must be on patrol. Probably went out after looking for looks to little bell. A after looking for their target. Okay. Just for safety, I was gonna put it on myself, but I pull out my ring of invisibility and I hand it to Bell. Oh. I okay. tell her in case anything goes wrong. And they try to corner you. I want you to put this on and run. You won't be seen. You you seem nimble. I think you'll be okay with this ring. What? What if I just put it on now? Just... <laughs> All right, uh, Bell's gone. <laughs> um. This might not have been the best thing to get, give a kid, but uh, what they, they want kids, right? So uh, someone well, tell Bell. me I did the right thing. <laughs> so, Bell, you just like... you did the right thing. <laughs> someone tell me I did the right thing, God damn it! I think you just lost a really nice ring. <laughs> I don't expect to see it back. I get it. Like, oh, I feel like I she needs it more than I do. anything at all. <laughs> oh, so, my God. So, yeah. Sierra... Sierra, you happen to put on this ring, and you, and as he gives you the ring, I'm assuming Belle, do you, do you put it on? I'm assuming you put it on. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you put it on. I I trust you. I trust you. Hey, there you go. There you go. So you put on the ring. It's a little. It's a little invisibility promise ring from older brother, older brother Hallman. And um, as you put it on, what do you mean promise ring? What is? I know. I know. I promise Whoa. to keep you safe. It's a promise. Okay. Hey. Okay. God, there's, there's a lot of there's a lot of promises out there, buddy. There's a lot of types of promises. Listen, <laughs> I was raised conservative Christian. I have trauma. <laughs> um, um, is that what the priest said to you? <laughs> this, is our, this, is our, this is our friendship oh, ring. Yeah. Are they priests uh, or pastors? <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the priests. The priest, the what, what's the difference? The rabbi. Uh, well, I guess the rabbi. No, One right. likes okay. to dress up more than the other. That's it. That's the only difference. <laughs> all right, all right. 
Let's not get in trouble here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> audience members, I'm out. I'm out of this show. Um, okay. So as Bell, you put on the ring. However, there's something that you guys do not know. And I'm sorry, uh, Hallman and Bell, but the Neon Knight's armor it, it, it is able to see anything invisible, just so you are aware. Um, so even though you have well, it on. Well, sorry, Bell. <laughs> Even though Bell, you even though you have it on, yeah. <laughs> look, look. Every, even though you got it on, you're invi- you're still invisible, Bell. So what do you want to do while you're invisible? Tell me, Sarah. What do you want to do? I hope I can hear you. <laughs> so, I hope I can hear. You. But uh, you can I, hear me. I yeah, we can hear you. I hear. You. Uh, and Hans Holman. <laughs> you're gonna what? Wait, hold on. Say the first part of that again. Oh, you're gonna de pants him? <laughs> okay. So, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna oh, have you did the right thing. Hallman, I'm gonna have you. Do a, are you gonna, are you gonna allow this Hallman to do the right thing? No. Oh no. Okay. So as she, I'm wearing very little clothing right now. <laughs> as she tries to de pants you, just pull down your like tight, fucking little like rocker leather barbarian pants on. Give me a deck save for me here. Give me a deck save. God I love saves it. like this. This makes D&D worth it to me. I, I rolled the wrong... <laughs> this is going to be so hard. I rolled the wrong die. Don't roll the wrong <laughs> die. Roll the right die. <laughs> and I rolled the same number. Uh, 11. Okay. So I'm going to say that Bell, you pulled down his pants about like halfway, but Hallman, you're lucky. You got like your little furry, like little... little. I'm assuming you're wearing some type of thong. <laughs> some type of... Wait, it's... What's your... It, it, it lets me have enough movement for these fights, okay? What the fuck do you want from me? I'm Is running back and forth. rolling all those nat 20s? Yeah, come on. Listen. <laughs> so every time you roll that, it was a lucky talk. Turning it into a different kind of horror show. Listen, <laughs> it has enough room in the front, so I'm comfortable. So as a, as a, as, as the, your kind of pants fall halfway down, like, Unfortunately, Bell, you pull it down, but Hellman's like really like hairy ass cheeks and a like a thong is like right in your face, and you're like, "That's ah! not hairy. That's not <laughs> hairy. Like he's it's hairless besides he's hairless besides his face." <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know what? I'll give you that. So it's just like a it's like a shiny hairless Santa's butt cheeks just in your face, <laughs> and you're a little girl. So this is not this is like. Not why crazy. did you want this, Bell? <laughs> <What>? <laughs> now we're both not happy. So, anywho, so Bell, you, so Hallman, you obviously know where Bell is now. She clearly is right next to you. And um, no, it's after duh. <laughs> so, Clyde, I'm going to move on to you here as we're kind of, you guys are crowding around these bushes. Um, Bell, you're kind of playing around with Hallman. Um, Clive, what would you like to do? And remember, speak up, Billy, because I know you're speaking with your phone. So, um, what would you like to do while you kind of are? Parading around, you see these knights here, the neon knight and the giant. What would you like to do? Well, Clive is going to look to everybody and see, after looking at the entire ensemble of knights and bigums. I'm sorry for giving you guys that name, by the way. Almond and Pippa. <laughs> you think we're going to get into a fight? Because I think we are. Well, yeah. They look I'm scary. Not- I'm, I'm actually kind of surprised Holman hasn't won up and punched it in the face by now. I thought that was a kid. I was a lot of restraint, buddy. A lot of restraint. And then you made the child disappear. So good, good job. Well, I'm You're trying good. my best, okay? You know Just because I give them gifts doesn't <laughs> yeah. mean I'm a good older brother. The reason I bring this up is because I have two powerful area of effect spells. I can hit them all at once. But unfortunately, it'll also hit anyone who is in the range within the circle. Holman. So cough, Holman, that. cough. <laughs> okay, my job is to get up in their face. Fuck all what? of you. I, At least wait first, for Holman, the... before you go in and swing it. Yeah. Oh I'll, I'll do spells too for, uh, to start off with. Fine. Yeah. Let's do all our right. ranged so, attacks first. You get two rounds and then I'm going in. So, uh, Jay, Clive has line of sight on them, right? He's within, well within range of the spells that he has. But yes, you, you guys are currently hidden. So you guys, you guys can use stealth attacks also right now if you'd like. 
Um, but you guys are within 30 feet right now, currently being hidden by these bushes. They are kind of, you are lit. Once again, this is a fey dimension. It's almost like you're obscured by these weird moving red vine bushes. All those orange dots on the map, by the way, guys, that you're looking at, those are all pumpkins. So if you guys walk, like look around you, those are all pumpkins randomly growing on the ground. So if you move, just be aware that if you go through any of those heavy orange dot areas, those are, it's kind of a little bit harder to go through than if there's not a lot of pumpkins around. So just be aware of that. Um, right. But yes, but you can see them, Clive. I was also going to mention to everybody because he is familiar with the Fey realms. Because there is Fey magic going on here, our own spells and magic might be a little topsy-turvy. So be prepared for anything going completely sideways. However, everybody, I will say this. If any of you make an attack right now, if you are wearing red, if your character said that they are wearing red, um, or if you acknowledge to me that you are wearing red before the at the beginning of your turn, which I, I didn't really go over that last time. We kind of did the, a costume change, but I didn't really have to, time to get to another one right before you went in. So if you just say it at the beginning of your thing, you guys get advantage on all your hits. Um, however, if there's something that counters from them, you do not get that advantage. Let's just say we'll get to that later. But um, you guys get advantage currently right now um, if you're wearing red. So, Clive, continue. So. Wait, hold on. Did we have any rests at all? Yes, you guys, you guys took a long rest. Remember, you guys went to bed after the concert. So that's technically a long rest. Um, okay. So you guys have all long rested. And uh, Stassi, don't go looking in your stuff too much yet. Just so you know, I, I, she's gonna no look now. <laughs> like the first thing she's gonna yeah. do. Yeah. Okay, so. Literally like a baby. Don't do the thing. I'm gonna go do the thing. By, by, the, the, way, you, by the way, you also look beautiful and great. Great. By the way, look at Stop. That's Wendelin in the flesh, everybody, right there. In Come character. On. Come on. Oh, you, look, you look beautiful with that wig. Every time you wear yeah. that hair, it looks great on you. Anyway, okay. Thank you. Sorry. It's one of my favorites. It's like if I ever wake up bald, this is what I'm gonna put on my head. You know, you should just be bald now. Just wait up. Just do it now. <laughs> any, any, Why any, wait? Why <laughs> wait? Why wait? Beautiful. Um, okay, so uh, let's go back to uh, Clive. Were you about to do a, a spell? You said. Were you about to do something? Yes. So first, Clive is going to look at everyone. We all good to attack then? Because I don't want any of my spells hitting anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got some for them, too. Yeah, right. currently we're all in the clear. You guys just hear Stet crack his knuckles. All right. Clive is going to then launch. So just getting the measurements. Uh, so just using the ruler. So right, let's see if you can see that. Yeah, so just right in the square between Bigum's knight and the other knight. The neon and the other knights are right in the middle. So at the, at the campfire, the basically? Yeah, they're all going to get hit right here. Yeah. So the, these, it's. I'm assuming it's. you said these four, the first knight, Big Ums, and oh, Neon Knight, and then this knight? Well, oh, how far point. away are they, by the way? They are 30 feet away from you guys right now. Okay. Oh, yeah, no. The spot that I chose, Jade, that they're all going to get hit with this one. Okay, so synaptic okay. static. They each need to make an intellect save of 17. Okay, an intellect save. Also, guys, please, since you're all going into battle now. By the way, this is a fun battle because I also want you guys to move around, use the field to your advantage, and also do character play for this fight because I think that'll be fun. We kind of have been doing that for a while, but you guys have kind of almost, or maybe I've been focused on you guys just fighting, doing your moves. I want you guys to utilize the area as well and make sure that you communicate with each other during this battle as well by the way. Um, okay, so, so you said an intelligence save, and by the way, all of you roll initiative, please. Sorry. If you don't mind. God, this is so fucking hard right now. <laughs> all right, I got a 19. 13. Got a 19. 14. I got a 22. A 22? Oh, fuck you, Peppa. Now you decide to roll well. <laughs> yo, yo, we got some strong players. I got we got a need Oh shit, Wendy. That's more like it. Thank you. Uh, while the set is, uh, Wait, while Clyde is doing this, can, can I, I can cast I go again if I have advantage? Oh, yeah. No, no, on, on not, for not for initiative. What am I advantage for? What can I use it? How, how to hit. 
to literally hit someone. Fine. <laughs> Uh, but and also, um, Bell, um, Sierra, when you have a moment, uh, roll initiative for me, please. If you have a moment, um, uh, and then, uh, can I cast a spell at the same time, Clive is? We uh, rolled initiative. Oh, what was okay? Sorry, Bell, I didn't, I didn't see that. Got it. Excuse Got you, girl. So I just saw that. Thank you. And, uh, Mamali, what was yours again? Uh, 13. 13. Thank you. And you, Holman, you want you wanted to start off the fight kind of with. Clive, yeah. doing an okay, cool. At the Let's same time he's doing that, I, I want to cast uh, Ice Storm. Love it. So you're going to cast Ice Storm like just, like around that? It's a, it's a 20 foot uh, circle, like area. So I want to make sure to get the Neon Knight and the Bigums, bro. Uh, they have to make a dexterity saving throw of 17. Okay. And then, Clive, what was yours again? Tell me one more time what's the save they need to do. Right, so intelligence save of 17, but any enemy NPC that is above low score has the score two or lower of intelligence is not affected by this. Okay, so okay. So if they're dumb, they're not affected. Oh, uh, uh, unfortunately, Hallman, they, they got a nat 20 plus two with that save. Bigums did, so you don't affect him at all. The Neon Knight, however, um, he got a, 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 the exact opposite. He got a one. So the Neon Knight... <laughs> desperately affected by this uh so give me that damage for that for the neon knight when you have a moment and then clive let me get to you guys thank you by the way this is awesome guys so um intelligence okay save. so that's 26 damage total if they uh saved it's 13 it also makes that area difficult terrain okay so, so they can't however, they move slowly however um the Knight, just so you know, you are going to learn this here. As you do this attack from afar, Holman, you see that he's hit by this thing, so he's going to take... He didn't save. However, he actually... The armor itself gives him immunity to all elemental magic and attacks. That being said, he's immune to lightning, and he has advantage against cold, fire, and acid damage. So he, however, only will take half of that damage. So what was that? Um... If he, uh, only part of this is cold damage, so he okay. takes uh, 14 bludgeoning damage, got you, and then six cold damage, so 20 got total. You. Like, got so cool. what are what is he immune to? He's immune, all elemental, he's immune to damage. all elemental damage is except that for mean, like radiant and necrotic, or no? No, no, that's not radiant. elemental, yeah, oh, okay. not elemental. Yeah. Uh, that also makes the area around them difficult terrain, so they right. move at half speed while they're in there. Everybody in that area, did they hit the whole area. If they, yeah, if they've passed or failed. Okay, cool. They, they both, uh, well, they both passed, so they're actually both okay. Um, but good job, you still hit them. Clive, the knights, however, and them, and bigums and all of them too have to make an intelligence save. So hold on one second, guys. I'll get to you in a second. Um... So you hit Bigums, Clive. So what's what's that uh, damage? Uh, so that'll be eight d six psychic damage. Rolling now. Give it to me, baby. Give it to me, baby. So that's twenty two psychic damage for those who failed. Those who saved take half, so eleven psychic damage. Okay. Let's check the neon knights intelligence here. Damn, Clive, great job. You're fucking him up with that. So, Hallman, you and Clive came out right out of the pocket. Wizard and Barbarian working together with some magic here. So, Clive, he takes There's also 22. Effect, uh, for those who failed and took the whole damage, yeah. there, the target has muddled thoughts for one minute. And during that time, all it rolls a d6 and subtracts the number rolled from all attack rolls. Jesus, okay. Okay. Good job, I just guys. got that spell too, and that was uh, that was what I was gonna open up with, so I <laughs> I made the terrain yeah. difficult instead. You guys did great. So technically, also you guys hit them all. So great job, Clive Hallman, fantastic. So let's get back to the beginning of this actual fight. Since you guys came in swinging, Pippa, you're actually the first one up. Is your fucking all the ready to go? And you're rolling. Hey, with... Pippa! <laughs> Congratulations. Halloween time. She's finally rolling right. It's been a minute since you've been the first yeah. one. I know. However, 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 what do you mean a minute? Ever since I've started playing. I, 
they used to go first back in the day. Yeah, yeah back, back in, in the, the day. day. When we were in person. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Uh, so, however, guys, I want you all to notice, Pippa, as you go up, as you're about to do something, Pippa, oh, you God. you notice, and the oh, rest no. of you all notice, Hallman, Sakura, Bell, Wendelin, Clive, all of you notice, your friend Pippa, her skin has changed. Now blending in with the rest of the forest, Pippa, you look down at your own skin, and it's a blood red. For some reason, your skin has just changed from the peach pink kind of color that it was, and it's now the same color as your horns. And you look at yourself, and you, what do you want to do? You're, you're, you're up for your move, but you just are stunned by this. All of a sudden, you just realize this. As you're about to do something, you look at your own body, it's different. Uh, I... I think I'm fine. I don't know. I kind of want to slap myself, but I don't Pippa's feel Pippa's evil. I don't feel anything, you know? Um, Clive, Did you get a you sunburn? I, I think it's just because we're in the Fey realm, and, you know, I'm a demonic little tiefling. I think it's just coming out of me. Onyx, will in Onyx interrupts and goes, Red Hill! It's cursed! It doesn't like tieflings very much! That's great. Oh. Do I need to roll inside? Am I like getting damaged in any way or? I mean, what do you, I mean, this is your turn. You're still in the middle of an attack right here. So right. what do you want to do? I'm going to ignore my skin and I'm going to use um, some blight. I'm going to use blight. I just have to make a con save. Oh, nice. And necrotic or necromantic energy washes over a creature. It's within a 30 feet radius. Well, who, who are you hitting? Um, I'm gonna go after the neon um knight because he's he's the one that's like the, the big hitter, right? Like, yeah, I think you gotta get a little closer. Yeah, how, what's the distance? Um, I can't look at my map. I got you. Okay, well, what's the distance of the spell? It's a 30 you? foot distance. Yeah, it's gotta be within 30 feet. Um, the knight from Pippa is so Pippa, you'd have to move up. Do you want to run up first? Yeah, I'm gonna get a little closer. Okay, so first Just thing you're gonna enough do enough to be able to make my attack. Okay, so Pippa, you are going to... Oh, that's that's Sakura. Where do you want to move? Um, just directly... Can I still kind of stay, like, slightly hidden behind that other tree up there so I'm still in partial view of, of them? This one? Yeah. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and all the... the um, How close are the other targets to the Neon Knight? They are within 15 feet of him. Um, all right, that's 15, uh, that's 12 feet. This is seven feet, 10 feet. Okay, so now if they, he has to make a con save of 14. Okay. And he still gets half damage. Um, also, Jay, you know remember, ready for the damage. he also yeah. subtracts a D6 total from his con saves. Okay, a D6 from the con saves. All right, so he's got to make a con save. He's got a plus four, so I'm going to take a minus two from that. So I'm just going to take two off because he does have advantage. No, actually, no. He's just another no, you, you have to roll. Yeah, yeah, I it's am. not I an am. automatic thing. I am. I am. <laughs> Stop trying to make this easy on yourself. I know. So he takes six off of the 13. So fuck. So yeah, he didn't save. All right. So my total damage is 34. Nice. And if... He didn't save. He gets all of it, yeah? Yeah. So 34. He also now, however, you guys have caught the attention, obviously, of the knight and the people in the area. So they all get up, and they are ready to attack you guys back. As the neon knight gets up and goes, What the fuck? Somebody's out there! Over here, bitch. Oh. <laughs> he goes, Somebody call me a bitch. Who called me a bitch? Me. Call me a I called you a bitch. No, actually her. <laughs> she did it. <laughs> I played a bitch. Yeah, oh, <laughs> still obscured. You just totally came out of her area. So he like looks <laughs> around. Pippa, do you want to do a stealth really fast to see if you're still hiding? Um, I could either do that or if he sees me, can I turn into an animal? No, now? you've already moved and you've already done it, so you can only use a bonus all right, action. All right. Well, isn't shape shifting a bonus action? Is it a bonus action? Um, it's I think actually. Let me look. Let me look. Yeah, you gotta look at your bonus action really fast. You should know this. You know, Pippa. you're rooted. You don't know. 
It's not in my bonus action. It's not in bonus action, no. Okay. No, I can just do it at will, but it's um, not in my bonus actions. Nope, so Pippa, that's all you have. But Holman, you just did an attack, but you're actually up again. I'm sorry, guys, but that's how it worked out. Uh, Holman, I'll, I'll be quick. Okay. Cool. I'm going to run up next to Pippa. All right. Oh my gosh. And I'll be like, hey, <laughs> hey, 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 kid, it, it's okay. Like, you, you did a little, you did a good amount. Let me show you how to do it a little better. I did. And I'm going to cast a blight on him, too. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but he has, to make, he has to make a con save of 17 this time. Oh, you have a stronger nice. blight. Okay, okay. I got you. Is this, are you doing yeah, it to Bigums or to the Neon Knight? Uh, to the Neon Knight. Subtract the D6, too. Okay, I got you. I'm going to give Holman a high five. So he fucked up. So you would definitely hit him. Uh, 46, 46 damage. damage. Nice. Um, nice. So 46 damage. Great. So he takes it again. The Neon Knights. You just see him go. Oh! And then once again, his knight armor just like shakes and shimmers. Uh, fucking Cyrus like kind of takes out his blade. Ready to go. You see Set kind of gather up. Pete the monkey. He looks up to soccer like. Ooh, baby. I'm ready to fight with you again, girl. And he like pulls out his like giant like log staff on his back. I'm sorry. You always have guys. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I'm sorry. I casted you know, blight on the wrong person. <laughs> Can I change that? <laughs> no, sorry, no, he's just a monkey. Uh, Pippa just like dabs up Holman for that one because we both did blight. I thought it was badass. I mean, it was like, I mean, th it's very rare that I get to do blight back to back with someone. I had to do it. Uh, and then as I'm dapping her up, she just sees me grow into a rage. Oh, there we go. That there we go. Okay, a rageful so dab. I'm, I'm staying right here, so you have a full round before I jump in. Okay. It's like it's like as you dab her, her like demon red skin energy goes on to you. You're just all like, <laughs> he's like fucking just like screaming. Pippa right? made me mad. She's evil. <laughs> all right. So up next, actually, is Sierra, my little ghost face. Give us the little girl wearing her little ghost, her little ghost <laughs> face out. She's uh, invisible. You can't see her. Oh, yeah, you're invisible. Well, the Neon Knight can see her. Wait, so, you now. He can see you. He can see you. I thought but he was you're... blind. Is he not blind? He's not. He can see. Uh, he can still see anything invisible because of his armor. Um, he want... and I can make him blind. You can try. <laughs> try. What do you want to do, I Bell? See, where is he? Back so, here. You are, um, I'll move, I'll move you, you're, you're right here, and okay. you are about, from the, it depends on who you want to hit, Bell. There's a lot of people out there. You're about 40 feet away from the closest target, that would be Bigums. Um, <laughs> but and, is and Bigums 40... really a target, though? Like, I like, mean, you guys he are hit. Chain, <laughs> he has a chain on him, like, what if he's just being enslaved? I um, that. I want to come on the side where let's see can i move that far yeah you, yeah you can move anything you want 30 feet let me let me measure some stuff out dang okay can't really get on that side where i want to go but i can do it on the other side cool 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 i'm gonna go over here. Nice. And I'm going to shoot at the Neon Knight. Nice. Great job. And we are going hey. to... Are you doing your multi-arrow attack again? Yes. All the time. Okay. All the Love time. It. Every time. That's their daddy's move. And I'm what just going to roll three of them, and you can tell right. me how many hit. I got you. Ooh, great job, Belle. You definitely hit you hit two of them. Okay, so here's the normal damage for two of them. Okay. You guys are good, uh, doing great. We are going to make one of them a shadow arrow. So we get some additional damage on top of that. Um, and then I'm going to also need a um, wisdom saving throw, please. Got you. Wisdom save. He's got a plus two, but 
Uh, he's at the, that's a 16 there. Okay, and then we're going to hit Do him. Do you like... subtract the D6 on that? Clive, is that a, is that a subtraction on oh. the D6? Uh, see, uh, on saving throw. No, no it's, it's just... On saving throw. It's ability checks, attack rolls, and only con saving throw. Oh, okay. However, however, because of the wilderness spell and your little Riz outfit that you put on and stuff like that, you get advantage. So you can actually try to do that again, and you actually can try to hit him one more time, actually again, with your with your that, that one that one that missed. Yes, you can. Sorry, guys, okay, so I forgot about that. I, I made up that own rule. We'll do that one again. So that was twenty. <laughs> nice. So that Pippa, hits. Pippa, you're just every time she shoots, Pippa's just like, God damn it. <laughs> Hey Pippa, why can't you shoot like that that kid, the literal child? I, I uh, no, no, no. I'm gonna try again because I still have. Um, give me another wisdom save, please. And here's an additional two damage on that one. Oh my god! Damage goes through no matter what. The wisdom save is just to see if he's blind. Just to see if he's blind. He has an eleven there. Now blind and cannot okay, see. So now he's like, so now so basically, so basically, you've shot like a blinding arrow straight through it. By the way, Wendelin, I know I'm, so, I'm sorry, I'm gonna try to rush. I'm trying, I know you're three, so I'm trying to get there. I'm trying to get there, Sassy. But anyway, so the so belt, the arrow just, just shoots right into his helmet, and he's like a delighted arrow. And he's like, fuck, I can't see, fuck. And he like kind of starts like he pulls off his helmet, and as he pulls off his neon helmet. Sakura, Amalia, and Pippa, your jaws drop as you see the face of somebody familiar. You Amalia, gotta be fucking kidding don't me. tell me. Come don't on. tell me. Is it Amalia, Connor? Amalia. Is it Fox face? Nope. It is a familiar man that you guys once pushed off of a bridge. Oh, God. Tried to oh. <laughs> who tried to molest both of you. Oh, and Amalia, you burnt his sister to a crisp for being a terrible, terrible woman. It do be like that. You see that this man is badly scarred on one half of his face, the other half still really handsome, kind of like a two-faced situation going on. And he looks to you and you guys, all three of you, Pippa, Amalia, Sokka, you see Joshua Sore, who you fought back in Ulrich, who used to work for Hallsworth, now wearing the neon armor. As he looks to you, he notices you, Pippa, right he's up front. He's blind, so he knows. Oh, yeah, he's blind. He thought he saw Pippa. He thought he saw Pippa. He's like, it's that bitch. It's that bitch. <laughs> As he's like, Arrows to the eyes. he just has an arrow sticking out of one of his eyes. That bell, you clearly are just shot into his face. He's clearly blinded. Great job, um, uh, Sierra. Great job. Um, I think that's all you can do, Bell, or do you have a bonus action? It's not it. I'm going to action, action surge. Oh, fuck. <laughs> okay, you're fucking him oh, up. Shit. This little girl might get She's revenge on this guy. <laughs> She's like, I don't know who you are. Death by Bell. <laughs> he's, he's like, I hate this team. Bell, like, Bell, like, action surge. Fuck action. me. <laughs> Oh my god, Pippa, this child is out shooting you. This is what I'm going to do right now. Pippa's going to pull out her crossbow and show it to Holman. I really think I need to upgrade. It's like falling apart. It's like cold as hell. It literally is barely hanging on intact. The string, That's what it looks like right now. The string like snaps like twang. <laughs> Just like the string and the crossbow snap. So Bell, Just wild shape, know? Pippa. Oh my god. <laughs> there you go, <are>, y'all. <laughs> she went from being the killer to being killed. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah. Hollywood at this point. That's, That's right. fine. That's fine. I just saw the movie last night, so it's fine. <laughs> I'm a... You just saw for Scream the for the first time. Oh no, I stopped for the first time. I watched it again last oh, night. Yeah. <laughs> I've watched it multiple times. Okay, All right. It's like get on that. All right, let's, let's get back. Let's get back to the game. So uh so the neon night. So you were gonna action surge, you said, Sierra. So what did you want to do? If you look at the rolls, you'll see I epically failed on my action surge. Oh okay, no, you okay. did not. Wait, do you not have advantage? <laughs> 
Oh yeah, you have advantage because you're. You have advantage. You have advantage. Then that one doesn't count. <laughs> well, that nat one does not exist. No. <laughs> Unless you get another one, in which case. It, it's a ghost. It's a ghost. <laughs> it's the Fey realm. No, okay, twenty. See, you hit. You hit the second yeah. one. That's right, That's Drew. That's right, Drew. <laughs> Three damage. Three okay. Okay, now I'm tired. I'm done. I want a snack. <laughs> <laughs> it's nap time. <laughs> yeah, well, Bell is a new heavy hitter. I That's swear you. to God. So uh, time, baby. So so up next, up next is our boy. Up next is our boy. Unfortunately, um, he is not here. But our boy Set kind of runs around the corner here, and I'm gonna have Set kind of run to this pumpkin patch, and he is going to stop right around here actually and he's gonna dodge uh actually just kind of wait around there i have set stuff here i have like a a, a little program it's not jesse's set it's a, it's a you program. technically can get out of it because he, he's supposed to keep his distance still for the long range people all right so i'm gonna have set go there let me just double check his stuff because like i said i have i do have a, a pre-programmed and set because i had their character stuff too remember so um i'm just not using their version of the character um, so yeah, I'm just gonna have Set kind of stay back for right now, and he's kind of waiting around in the bushes, kind of looking at that knight that's kind of right ahead of him, kind of making a plan for it. And uh, he looks to Bell. He's like, "I think I got him," but he's kind of like kind of crouching down. Sakura, you, however, are up next. So what would you like to do, Sakura? Um, where is it? Well, go for it. And look. Okay, Take so look. I'm gonna cast. Um... Toll the dead. Um, so I am going to point at the neon knight, and the sound of a Dolores bell will fill the air around the neon knight for a moment. And he needs to succeed a wisdom saving throw of uh, 16. Oh, he was so close. He had a 15. Fuck. And he's not wearing any red. His neon lights don't count as the same type of thing as, as wearing red as they change colors from blue to green. It's like almost a variant of red, but not quite what he needs to get the advantage. So you definitely hit. I'm going to let you hit. Okay, so gonna hit. it's going to be... Um, hold on. It's going to be 3d12 because he's already taken damage from other people and... If he has any missing hit points, then it goes from a D8 to a D12. Nice. Great job. Okay, give him a hit. Okay. So 22 damage, and um, it's going to be uh, necrotic damage. Great. So he, he takes it. He's just like, as he's kind of blind and he can't see what's going on, he's like, God! Damn it! What's going on? And he just all of a sudden his body just, uh, he kind of lifts in the air again. His body twists and contorts in the in the neon armor, and then he just drops to the ground as he's kind of slammed by your magic down. Um, Sakura, is there anything else that you'd like to do? You can still make a motion. You can still move. What would you like to do? If, or a bonus action? Uh huh. Hmm. One of us. One of us. One of us. I don't know. Hold on. Um, I'm just saying, like, move up to us so that way we can all be grouped up and get hit okay. by one. <laughs> one yeah, thing. Yeah, I'll I'll move next to Pippa. I'll be on the other side of Pippa. So yeah, you say you hide behind the rest of that bush, kind of like near that stump kind of area. Mm -hmm. Good move. Good move. Okay, so Sakura. Great job. Good turn. Amalia, you're up, my little firestorm. You're up. All right. So as they see that it's Joshua, I'm going to go up, like, just right in front of Holland. Okay. I got you. Okay, yeah. Get hit instead of me. That's fine. <laughs> you're going to go right in front of Holland? <laughs> yeah, in front of him. And then okay. I'm going <laughs> to look over to Joshua and go, oh, I'm going to enjoy this so much right now. <laughs> He's like, he's and, like, uh, he's like, looks around like, who the fuck said that? <laughs> he's like, I don't know who's, who said that? So, um, you said like the other enemies are immune to fire. He's, he's immune to fire. The rest are not. Okay. So I'm actually elemental adept, so I can ignore that resistance. 
Um, <laughs> okay. All right. And I also at the start of my turn, I'm also going to just make it clear that I did change into my red outfit. So I have kind of like black leather pants and then kind of like this velvet, like deep red, like frock coat on. Love it. And now uh, I'm going to cast Abyssal Fireball with advantage. Oh my God. Oh, nice. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah, oh, yeah. So you so you first one eighteen to hit. Which are you trying to hit? Just uh, just Joshua or anybody else? Oh, so I'm gonna hit it at no, Bigums. Don't, get, don't get the Bigums. What if he's <laughs> nice? <laughs> Bigums gotta go. He's what freaky. If we can, what if we can keep him as a pet? No. no! Not. <laughs> Bigum is is a. But uh, he's pink. Is, is a Hollywood Hollywood and Clive? Do you guys know if uh, if an ogre? Oh, sorry, not an ogre, a troll, or a, sorry, he's not, no, he's a, he's a, he's a demon. He's a demon, so he'd be a fiend. So he's not a, oh. he's not a monster. So if no. he's a demon, he's probably not good. Uh, well, I mean, wait, 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 hold it on, depends. Hold on. I said probably. He's not a devil, he's a demon, correct? He is a demon, yeah. Yeah, so, you don't want this, do not yeah. want this as a pet, trust me. <laughs> so, Molly, are you going to try to hit Bigums? So I'm going to hit where that campfire is. So this abyssal fireball has a 30 foot radius. So anything okay. within a 30 foot radius of where that um, fire pit is, is going to get hit. Us. Oh, well, they're going to get your friends. Hit you for sure. <laughs> you didn't, you, you didn't cast, there. Yeah, you didn't cast can your I, other Can thing. I just ask? There's no kids in the area, right? No, Bell. Bell? Bell? <laughs> no, it's unfortunately, unfortunately, the orange, Sakura, the orange spots aren't children trapped in pumpkins. Oh my god, that'd be so <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> uh, right now, as of your information and as your knowledge goes, no. Um, but uh, unfortunately, as Molly, you are. Goes. Hey. No, I'm going to use a uh, careful spell because it's meta magic. So I can just twist spells to suit my needs. Okay. I mean, I mean, what, but if you use that though, and you moved, you technically can't use fireball unless you that careful spell. Is that a bonus spell? Is that like a yeah? She can it's under my yeah. heat and treat. Okay, yeah. okay, then awesome, awesome. So yeah, so if you do that, then your friends won't get hurt, and we're just perpetually them. on fire. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, they, <laughs> I'm actually resistant. It's fine. I, <laughs> did okay. a um? Did an eighteen hit for all of them or? Yeah, hold on, hold on. I have to do it. It's a what save again? A deck uh, save? Just, it's an 18 to hit to their armor class. Oh, okay. So um, you have advantage on that. So I'm going to, you do hit all of them except for the Neon Knight, but you can give me another roll with that if you'd like. 21 hit. You do hit with that. So they oh. all take the damage. So what's the damage for all of them? So with this spell, da, 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 da. so this is going to act as a regular file fireball, but upon exploding, everything in a 30 foot radius is engulfed in dark abyssal flame, dealing 12 D six fire damage, four D 10 necrotic damage. And the opponent must make a constitution savings throw. Um, yeah, I specifically didn't choose to pick that mm -hmm. spell. Cause I thought that was broken. And then the ball is just <laughs> Well, the, the Neon Knight did not make that throw, and I'm assuming and, the uh, rest of the knights are not going to make this throw, but we'll see. So, on a failed save, the enemy takes full damage and is left with a chilling feeling throughout their body, having their movement speed and dealing 2d6 full damage at the end of their turns, and they can repeat the save at the end of their turn. Um, okay. So. <laughs> one, one, of the knight, one of the knights saved, um, at least. Uh, after 21 yeah he oh, got, well, for, oh, for the constitution sorry yeah for the constitution so that one did not that one Hold did on, not did say, con save, yeah con save but not it was one of the other knights not 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 the neon one yeah not the neon no, one all of them were hit with they all failed the uh, psychic damage spell so they all oh, okay okay well then amali you then you hit all of them then so give them all the full damage Okay, so full damage is 68 for each one. Oh, God damn. Oh, yeah. Damn. damn. That's so, my girl. So you, Amalia, in that moment, you knew what his sister tried to do to you. You know what Joshua tried to do to both you and Sakura back when you were in Ulrich. And also, Amalia, he was terrorizing your city 
as basically a molesting knight taking advantage of his position in the West Kingdom government for a good while. He did it, and you know this, and he was working for Hallsworth right in your city and his main knight. So seeing him again, so, let's just say, oh, yeah, yeah, he fucking So uh, when I do this, I want it to kind of like the, since we're kind of in the fail, Fey realm, it looks like a regular fireball as I shoot it, but like as it's going towards him, it's twisting into like a dark abyssal fireball. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like it just coats the whole area as you just hit all the knights. The three knights drop dead. All three of them engulfed in your black flames. You watch as the queen of the underpole literally makes a name for herself. Belle, you're queen of your drow people. This is the first time, little Sierra, that you're seeing fucking Avalia be this goddamn powerful. She steps up and engulfs every knight in flame and they drop dead. Um, he literally sparked some bad memories. Yep, yep, he did. Yeah. Okay, hold on, Okay, well, that definitely helped the fight move along. Um... <laughs> Thank you. We got shit to do. Do I need to be here? Like, can I go? <laughs> for, one, for, one, for once, for once, set, set just, like, leans back. As he was looking at that night, and it just engulfs in flames, set like leans back, lights a cigarette, and goes, "For fuck's sake! For once, it wasn't me. <laughs> He's like, for once, for once, it wasn't just me." <laughs> like just like smokes as he like relaxed for a second, just for a moment. Um, however, Wendelin, you actually because he killed all the knights, you are up next, Wendy, and you see that the neon knight is still badly damaged in front of you, and so is Bigums. They're both engulfed in black flames, smoldering, but they're still alive, both the Neon Knight and Bigums. What would you like to do, Wendelin? You're kind of farther back than the rest of them. You are about 40 feet away from Bigums, Wendy, and you are then about 60 feet from the knight. Perfect. What would you like to do, baby? Okay. I would like to cast... Wait, sorry, can I just ask, like, we know that they're, like, trafficking the children, right? Well, you guys have been told this, yes. Okay. But, like, that's, like, all the information we have, basically, right? Like, we don't well, know I mean, where Onyx, they are. Well, we know the kids are at the castle, like, yeah. according to Onyx. Onyx okay. knows where they are. So if you're okay. wondering if you need to keep them alive. Are, yeah, 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 that's, that's what stuff. I was wondering. Mm -hmm. All right, that's up to you guys. But uh, Wendell, yeah, we know, we know where they are. They don't. They don't need to stay alive. Okay, good. <laughs> Just making sure. Okay, so, I, 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 get, I, I get it. Yes, right. yes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. I cut you off. No, you're good. <laughs> I'm glad you you made that point. Thank you for pointing that out. Um, yeah. Anyway, I'm uh, I'm gonna use a cantrip and cast Toll of the Dead. Okay, you love it. And that's uh, sixty feet. Um, I'm gonna cast it onto the knight. Um, he has to beat a, is it a wisdom of 15? Got it. That's so funny, because yeah. I just cast that one earlier too. I know. <laughs> Yo, we got two, two lights. It's, it's all I, honestly, two it's one of really all I really got. I don't I don't have a lot to work with. I'm, I'm, I'm a domain of light, I can't do much. No, you- It's a uh, demon. You guys are doing, yeah, Domain of Light is perfect, actually, Wendelin. This is your, yeah. this oh, is fun. Jack, Wendelin. Radiant, yeah, I'm, radiant, like, I'm limited. Like time to shine. <laughs> yeah, this is, to be honest, Literally. To be honest, Wait, can I take that back? I'm just kidding. Yeah, to be honest with you, Pippa and Wendelin probably have the best advantage here within the Fey Realm connected areas. Sakura, too, a little bit. But, um, but anywho, so, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Wendelin, you definitely hit, so give me that fucking damage as the Neon Knight. You might be able to take him out, Wendy. What's the damage here? That's, uh, 21 damage. Oh, shit, Wendy. So you can see that these, these girls, Wendelin, I think this might be the first time in the game. You see that your girls, Amalia, clearly does not like this knight. And you can clearly tell by the way he's been fucked up. And you can just sense it, Wendelin. Oh, yeah. You want to destroy him. Mm -hmm. How do you want to destroy him? Uh, how does this work again? Actually, actually, you know what, Wendland? I'm gonna make this more meaningful for you. Roll me. Oh, because you get the killing shot here. As you look at Molly and see that this knight that you don't know is smoldering on the ground in black flames. Give me a wisdom roll here, Wendelin, and see how you do with a vision. Just a good old wisdom check. A good old wisdom check. Okay. 
I can't read. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's not, It's okay. It's not. But you have advantage. You have advantage. advantage. You're in the very orange. You're wearing orange. You're wearing orange. The the Fey Realm is helping you out here. The Fey Realm is literally. <laughs> oh yes. Okay. Okay. One so, more. One more. So, so the, 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 let's say the Fey Realm is not helping you. <laughs> so, the, 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 they don't like her. You get a that one with advantage. So, so the the Fey Realm is like uh, giving you static in your brain, basically. And um, oh. as you as you look at him, you're trying to get a grip, a grip and use your visions to see what who this guy is as you're about to hit this killing blow. But the only thing that you can see is how ugly a, he is. is how ugly, oh, yeah, exactly how <laughs> ugly he is, how mad Amali is at him, and there's just something about him that gives you the the fucking tingles. If you went to a bar, the ick. And, creeps, <laughs> and you saw this guy, you would just be like, he's gonna try to grab my ass. That's that's his, that's mm -hmm. this guy. So, what do you want to do? How do you want to kill him? Oh, I want to fucking take this scum out. Okay, well, yeah, you, you, sent, you sent your fucking blast of magic at him, your gold magic, your radiant toll of the dead, shoots out of your arms at him. What it's happens? like gold and, and black, like there's like there's like gold glitter or some shit going through it, I don't know. Oh, I love it. I love that the gold shoots through her black flames, like the black hell flames surrounding the body, but yet your gold yeah. magic shoots right into the black flames. His body just like seizes with the magic. What happens to him? Tell me. Tell me. He, he, I don't, I don't, he go poof. I don't know how tall the dead works. <laughs> <laughs> well, as, as, he shakes, as he shakes within his armor, he just, you watch as his body just like disintegrates into just powder. crumbles. Yeah, just crumbles. And you guys watch as this vaporizing. legendary, this legendary neon armor is now just left behind. However, the chain that he was holding to Bigums is now let go as the giant that still remains with the brain on his stomach now stands there around you all. <laughs> he kind of just kind of starts screaming as you guys watch this giant demon with a brain protruding from him, screaming around. He still seems to be angered and in battle with the rest of you. He is now going to make an attack, actually, as he runs forward straight at you, Pippa. Okay. How? Okay. Hang on, hang on, hang on. From my How? from my Abyssal Fireball, he has his uh, movement speed half, and he's also taking two d six cold damage. Okay, so let me. And roll. yeah, he has We're like a chilling feeling throughout his body. Give me a two d six. He takes the d six penalty for attack rolls too. Okay. All right. Yeah. So Kabali, give me that damage. That is 10 damage. Oh, you, as he's running towards you, Pippa, as he's running towards you, ready to attack, the brain, the, the brain on his stomach just lights up with the black flames and it just melts off of his belly. And he looks like he's right about to try to eat you. He goes, hungry. But he's, yeah, you killed him. You killed him, okay. So as, as he's running towards Pippa, I just kind of like clench my fist and the like flame just shoot up around him and just like burn him slowly to the ground before he reaches her. <laughs> he just like fucking and lights up in black flames and it, just like, melts. However, so nasty. yeah, Pippa, Halvin, nasty. Amalia, Sakura, you guys just <laughs> smell this burning stank that just fills the area just <laughs> all around you guys. As the bodies fucking rot and fucking begin to just disintegrate away. I was like literally about to morph into a giant crocodile. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Well, you you managed to defeat all of these groups, all of them here. The Neon Knight's armor is just left there on the ground. Um, Onyx, now, this was the motherfucker that was so hard for you? <laughs> Onyx. Onyx is like he didn't have the queen with him, okay? <laughs> yeah, listen, listen, listen to her. I I was by myself, you bastard. <laughs> Fuck you. I was just Fuck. saying, man. It's been like six seconds, and they're dead. Clive, <laughs> like, like all of them. Clive, I'm gonna try to Cyrus. Hey, Cyrus, you want an upgrade in armor? Cyrus is gonna look at that armor. Then he looks to Bell. Actually, you know what? 
Cyrus is going to go gather that armor. He picks it up. And Bell, Cyrus walks over to you. And he hands you the neon armor. Or the, the glowing neon armor. And Bell, he kind of places it down for you. You're going to need a lot of protection moving forward. You know, I'm not going to always be around to help you out. And we didn't really get you a lot of stuff back in, uh, we didn't get you a lot of stuff back in the park. So I think you should take this. I mean, he looks over to Sakura. You know, fighting off elements, that's going to be good for her. It's fine. <laughs> What, you want it, you piece of shit? <laughs> that's fine. That's, that's fine. <laughs> so, Bell, he hands you the neon armor, and Sierra, I will add that to your stuff. The neon armor, just so you know, Sierra, when Bell puts it on, you are yeah. immune to any um, damage that is elemental, which means that you have advantage um, against all of it. Uh, for all your saving throws, and you are immune specifically. You cannot get damaged at all by any type of lightning or any type of electric, like e electrical magic. However, you get advantage on all of your saves against any type of elemental damage. And I will program that into your thing. I have the armor already created. So, Bell, does her AC go up too? Shit, her like... AC does go up. It will go up. Um, it comes nice. with a, it comes with a bonus as well. So, Bell, as Cyrus gives this to you, hands it to you as well. And uh, you uh, put it on, and it it weirdly fits to your form immediately. And uh, and it like it was a weirdly like almost a, a magical, you know, armor, if you will, bell. And it fits perfect. And he looks at you. He's like, "Hey, you look like a little knight." He kind of like tussles your hair a little bit. Yeah, just just like you. Yeah, just like me. You know, my son is a knight. Did you know that? I didn't know you had a son. Yeah, I guess we haven't got to talk much in the last couple of days, huh? I mean, since I... You know. Look. Let's go save these kids. I know if it was you up there, I wouldn't... I wouldn't want them there, you know? Let's say we go get him out. Okay, I think we need to do that and do it now. Hey, Sakura, you wanna wanna watch out for her for a second? Yeah. Help you. Yeah, I, can, I, can use <laughs> I don't wanna. I don't wanna. Look at her put on all the armor. He like, he like hands you like the rest of like the trousers for like the, the armor oh, that she's gonna like wear. I was like confused. Like watch her for what did you need me to watch her for a sec? <laughs> I just have there's more, there's more armor here. I just don't think it's a good. You know what? Fuck it. He's <laughs> like, just like you know what? It, just fuck it. He just hands you the armor to finish Bell so you can put it on. Let's just say that like soccer, you kind of <laughs> go to the bushes with Bell and you help her put on her armor one piece at a time. And then, uh, well, that's going on, Jay. Could Clive make an Arcana check on one of the pumpkins he's nearby? Yes, you can. You can. Uh, while he does that, can I summon in a Halloween special uh, Santa sleigh for the kids as that we're about to rescue? <laughs> yes, you can. I mean, yes, you can also summon the Santa sleigh on the Halloween. Listen, I'm, I'm sorry. Like, I feel like it's going to be better it's if there's a... Christmas, okay? <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you. It's hey, fucking kids, a okay? 15 total. A 15 total? Yep. As you look at the pumpkins down on the ground, Clive, and yes, uh, Hallman, on the other side, let's just say on the other side of that, um, you summon it on the other side of the, the bridge where, like, you guys are going to cross over. Um, yeah, that's fine. On the other side. I, I, I'm just not going to put it on the map right now. But it is summoned on the other side. Um, and Clive, as you look down at the pumpkins on the ground, uh, you notice that, once again, the jack-o'-lanterns are lit on their face. Um, they seem to get go brighter and brighter 
as the uh, the night is going on, um, as it continues to get deeper and deeper into the day, um, you notice that the lights get lighter and lighter in the pumpkins. It just seems to be magical. Um, however, you're not quite sure if it's a spell or if it's natural. It, it's a, it's like a weird mixture of both, which is what the Fey Realm does. It convolutes magic with reality, and um, and you're seeing that you can't tell, but these pumpkins seem to be naturally smiling at you. Hmm. Well, Clive then just gives a smile and then thinks he thinks back for a brief moment and remembers his daughter Tabitha because she always loved carving pumpkins. He gives the pumpkin a little tap on it and says, Happy All Hallows Eve. Hmm. And you kind of walk like walk away from the the little pumpkin and it kind of weirdly turns and like watches you as you like walk away like as the face on the pumpkin seems to once again be alive but then like once again turn back quite normal Wendelin you're here in the forest as well oh hold on Sarah do you need something do you say something no oh just making sure sorry I couldn't tell um Wendelin, as we are now in the woods yourself, um, what would you like to do? You're kind of in the back still in the area. You're kind of still back there by Pete the monkey. He kind of takes out his long staff and then puts it back on his shoulder and kind of uh, then standing kind of near you in the back and kind of looks over you, gives you a smile. Can I roll a perception? Yeah, you can do whatever you'd like. Only because I don't really know what's going on. No, it's okay. I mean, you're just in the woods right now. You're just kind of making your way towards the, the area where the kids and people have been kidnapped or, or trapped, you've been told. Um, are we all just kind of spread out right now? We're just walking? Yeah, you guys are kind of just, let's just say you're kind of just headed up towards where that, that log area is, where that campsite they were all at was. I mean, Cyrus is busy over there with Jade and, and Belle and Set is smoking and Pippa is kind of with in that same area as Amalia and Hallman. So, um, yeah, what would you like to do? You can do anything, like, literally anything. Yeah, um, I'm just kind of looking around, you know, so seeing if I notice oh. anything. 14? Right. 14 is pretty good. So you actually do notice that um, Onyx seems to be looking at you. Who the fuck is that? We didn't get a chance to meet, did we? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that in character. <laughs> oh, I mean, okay. it's okay. I mean, it's okay. I mean, I just... um, hi. I don't think we've met in character. Oh no. I mean, I, I know it's it's okay. I I didn't really meet you in character either. <laughs> so it's, it's nice to it's nice to meet you, uh, Onyx. Uh, yeah, I, I, it's kind of a weird situation. I really appreciate you guys helping me out. I mean, like, I couldn't have saved these kids by myself. Uh, sorry. You look familiar to me. That's that's the only reason why I, I'm staring at you. I, you. You're from South Mall, right? Do you know how many times I get that line from a guy? No, I'm. As beautiful as you are, that's not why I'm talking about that. I feel like I know you, but I don't. But are you from South Mall? Yes, that's where I was born. Then I think you have explaining to do. At least to me. I'm to you. Sure <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure I saw people that look a lot like you at the castle we're about to go to. And they seem pretty eager to buy a kid. You know what I'm talking about? No. I can swear to God. Wait, look, you look, look like me. What do you mean? Like, they're from my town or? Yeah, this couple. From South Mala, they're up at Bogart's place. Apparently, they're here to buy something, or if they're there, someone. Mm. 
looks just like you. Maybe older, but they're from South Mala too. I wouldn't forget a pretty face. I mean, even if it is older than yours. Wendelin's just kind of quiet now. Like, this, the same kind of expression I have. She's just very, like, uh, she thinking a thunk real hard. I wish I had a better way to say that, but. I'm going to have Pete kind of walk up and interrupt the situation. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. You're saying that she got a twin or something that's up there? No, I didn't say anything like that. I'm saying that there's a couple up there that looks a lot like her. Both of them. You only saw their faces. You don't. You don't know who they are, what they're doing there. They were waiting in the lobby of the castle. That's all I know. And if you're waiting in the lobby of Bogart Tusk's fucking castle, whatever you're doing there ain't good. I'll tell you that. Look, I don't mean to pry. I don't know who you are, but I'm gonna save these fucking kids. And if these people that look like you are gonna be a problem. Well, I think you're a problem. How can I be a problem if I don't even know what's going on? You don't even know who I am. Yeah, well, all I know is that two people that look like an older version of you are holding kids inside a fucking cage. At least that's the last I saw them by. Listen, I really hey, don't appreciate asshole. you. She literally just killed the guy holding these kids. So why don't you lower your voice? Hey, and hey. thank her. I'm not trying to cause any problems here. In fact, I'm actually really grateful. I, I'm sorry. I'm just letting you know. Well, well I... the sooner we get there, I guess we'll find out what's going on. She looks at Pippa. What? We're obviously on your side. We're going to save these kids. She has nothing to do with this. But you saying that does kind of spark like a little idea I have. Also, question, how many people know about this castle and all like the trafficking that's involved? Is it a very, very private thing or do people know of it enough to where you can just say, walk up to the castle and be like, hey, I got a kid for you. You know, type of thing. A little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. People know about Bogart Tusk, but nobody really talks about what happens inside. Kind of like a ditty party. Because if you say that she looks like the people that we're trying to get these kids from, what if we infiltrate with, like, a decoy, have Wendelin... Maybe not saying we can, we have to do this, but as an idea, maybe what if we infiltrate by getting ourselves in there and then attacking from the inside? Pete's like interrupts you. Wait a minute. Are you saying you want to try to sell the kid? He like points over to Bell. Like <laughs> we're obviously not gonna like sell Bell, but if everyone thinks maybe, maybe this we'll, could be an maybe we'll dress Pete up. Yeah, I'd rather dress Pete up than <laughs> Bell. We'll dress Pete up. You know? Yeah. Er, all in guys, favor. Right? Yeah. But Holman can turn invisible. I can turn into an animal. I can Not anymore. <laughs> yeah, Bell's like, well, like <laughs> Bell's got the ring on. <laughs> she like slipped it up in the air like Which is very game changing now, I'm sorry, but yeah. So I can be your guard. But you know what I mean? Like maybe I could turn into a really small animal. I could be in someone's pocket. When like they Pete's pocket. Up there. Yeah. <laughs> Wendell can walk up there. I've done it before. Uh, Wendell can walk up there with Pete, his little kid. Maybe uh, we can try to infiltrate from the inside so they don't see it coming, and then we can have another group infiltrate from another, like maybe from the back or something. Like we split up, yeah. like you were saying. I mean, I have pretty good persuasion now. Um, me and Wendell can both like pretend to be like the sellers, and then she'll have like back up in case they don't believe her immediately yeah um back up back up i could turn it into like some creature and just take a chomp out of them onyx looks to both of you pippa hallman kind of looks over you wendelin 
look, you could try to do this. I mean, they're going to be inside there. That's the last I saw the people that look like you. And if you guys get in there, just know this. He looks over to you, Clive. Bogart's a necromancer. He's going to have guards. And half of them will be dead. One of the main reasons it was hard for me to get close to the place in the first place. You guys think that I couldn't have taken these guards out by myself? Try fighting about 50 zombies before that. How do you think I got hurt before you helped me? He looks over to Soccer and Wendelin. Cyrus. But I'll lead you there, and you guys actually have a pretty good plan. Soccer, can't you also, like, make the dead follow whatever you want? Um, yeah, well, it depends. But generally, yeah. Can't you turn his <laughs> army into our army? Possibly. Actually, I think I can only do up to like a certain amount. Of that action. helps. Yeah. That's, the That's essentially rebuke undead. It'd be handy, but that, along with a lot of radiant spells and magical damage, would be devastating against the undead. Radiant Light and Magic is the greatest adversary to necromancers and their dark magic. So, there's that. Pete's gonna run up on top of Amalia's head and, like, kind of climbs up your back, Amalia, and stands on top of your head like a little monkey and just kind of, like, pushes his hand on your shoulder and pushes your head down. He gets up there like, I say we go in there, guns a-blazing, and we take them out. What do you say? Come on, there's a whole bunch of us. It can't just be like that. Like a secret Yeah, mission. we're not going to do that, buddy. You need to calm down. Clive is going to look right at Pete and then just mental, telepathically just glare at him and telepathically, telepathically say, shut up. <laughs> Pete, Pete just goes like, no, and he puts his head down, kind of covers it up and kind of goes, walks over and stands next to Bell. Like, just as he looks at Bell as you're in your, like, new armor, he's like, that looks pretty cool. You look pretty cool with that on. What do you like? Uh, what do you like a small? You wear a size small? I don't know if Bell's there. <laughs> Sierra's there, but he's just like, he's just like talking. Hold on. Is this that annoying milk kid? No, this is the monkey. It's a monkey. monkey. It's Pete. It's the other one, that's why. Oh, it's the other one. The other annoying one, stupid monkey. He's like... I wish that armor was on me. I think it'd be better on a little on a little monkey than a little girl. Um, monkeys don't wear armor. Monkeys fuck also you, I wear armor. <laughs> he like starts screaming at your face again, like just looks at you like fuck you. So monkeys uh, also shouldn't talk. <laughs> He's like, I say the same thing about girls and walks away. <laughs> He's like, uh, hey, honestly, if, if the plan doesn't work, we can just sell Pete, you know? <laughs> I mean, we can use him as the decoy. We can okay, play hold, on, him. Hold, on, hold on. I think Pitbull. Oh, no girl. Well, I think, uh, what, sorry, what did you say, Sierra? Sorry, say that again. We can put him in a dress and make him look like a little girl and use him as bait. He's like, I'm not going to be a little girl. If anything, I'm going to dress up like a little boy because I look like a little boy. Tell you if come on, a now, boy. Girl. She, she actually it's might more be right. believable as a girl. I mean, unfortunately, Pete, you do have that tail. It's kind of obnoxious. If you wore a dress, it might cover it up a little bit. Ah, oh, he looks to Clive. Do you hear this? You're gonna make me dress up like a girl. What do you? Do you think that? What do you? What? Do you, what? Don't look at me, monkey. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Clive, oh my god! Set, set, set just goes. Set just goes. Enough! And he grabs Pete and kind of rips off one of his sleeves. And set like just kind of wraps a skirt around Pete's like little ass. He's like ah ah ah! And he just like like starts to wrap it around him. And set puts him on the ground as like you guys watch Pete. He's like wearing like a little makeshift like wrapped around dress. He looks up like this is embarrassing. See, you look it... much better now. It'll be, it'll be fine. <laughs> Peppa's gonna look over at Clive and Holman, but what do you guys say? You th what do you think about this idea? 
Do you have any other ideas that we could try to use? If it doesn't work, we could go in guns blazing, but it's better no to try guns something. Blazing. I said if it doesn't work. As you as you say that, Amalia. Oh. Definitely. Hallman and Wendelin, take Pete. You both are the most diplomatic here. A few others of us will probably, we could maybe sneak around the back, find another entrance while the others are being essentially distracted by the diplomacy. And if it doesn't work, at least we can guns blazing flank them from front and back. Or easier idea than just trying to dress up a monkey as a little girl. Um, <laughs> and then I uh, cast disguise self. So like I make myself about like a foot shorter and then like my feature is much, much younger looking. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, everybody just looks at a ball and you're like, really what bitch? Holy <laughs> shit. I mean, I can do that too, but I, I'd go to like six feet instead of like five, so that doesn't really help. So yeah, Amalia, that's I'm short. <laughs> you do you do shrink down, Amalia, to the point of looking almost like a middle school aged girl. Like you look and your features change, so you look like you're about 13, 14 years I old. I don't like this. Um, <laughs> uh, I'll be so the... cute. I'll be your bait. <laughs> I'll, I'll go with Amelia. I'll be like a like a poisonous animal or something, and I'll be like hidden on her person. So I'll be there. Uh, right. Belle, do you want to be invisible with us, or do you want to go with Clive and Wendelin? <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right I, I i'm gonna choose to believe she's gonna be with us because <laughs> i'm right. honestly terrified right now for what <laughs> i just did as you guys <laughs> all think clive is gonna look to onyx it's probably best you travel with my party because the guards or tusk himself would recognize you onyx looks to you clive i was gonna say the same thing look i'll go with uh the other knight and the rabbit and we'll be lookout outside Girl with glasses, girl on phone, <laughs> <laughs> barbarian, barbarian Santa, devil girl, and the fire girl, and the elf. We'll all go to the area. However, we got to split up. So it's going to be, this is how you guys are going to go. So you guys all head to Bogart's uh, manor, um, or the little castle. You guys do split up. Wendelin, you go off around the back with Clive, Sakura. Wendelin, you're on the back. However, oh wait, Wendelin's supposed to come with us. Oh, sorry, sorry. She looks Wendelin. like him. Sorry. Yes, yes, sorry. Yeah. Wendelin, Pippa, Amalia, and Bell and Hallman. You guys are going in the front. While Clive, you're going to be with Sakura, and Pete, going around the back. And that's how we're going to start when we come back after this break, everybody. So we will be back after this break and learn who are these people that look like Wendelin inside. So we will be back after this break, everybody. So give me one second to pull up the break thing. It's fun for you guys. It's Halloween time. We're almost done, Wee! guys. We'll take a week off. And then we'll get to see each other all live in person next week, except for Halloween yeah, and Clive. Both them. Stop fucking guys. saying that. And Wendelin and Wendy. Stassi here too, but Stassi should be here. But the rest of us will party. Sierra will be able to meet Amalia. Amalia will be able to meet Sierra. Look Jealous. At that. Yeah. Oh, I hope y'all have a blast. To be honest with you, Sierra, actually, I hope you have no fun without me there. That's what I <laughs> but one day, guys, one day we'll kind of fly you guys all out. How about that? So let's get to the Aww. break, everybody. We'll be right back. everybody it's the kid from the dirty 20 dice shop here it's spicy and dicey for my girl sierra what up girl i'm selling this stuff for you and we're gonna be at dungeon palooza again on thursday here in l.a at the exchange stop by and buy some merch from us yo also if you don't holman and clive and i can beat you up in a parking lot hey let's make it the ihop this time <laughs>
All right, guys, I'll be with you in one second. I'm just pulling up the map, so just give me one more second if you guys don't mind. Alright guys, so hold on one second. Boo 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 and the map will be coming up right about right now. So this is the map guys as you can see um, it's a little bit spread out but uh, as you enter the thing Pete, Clive and Sakura you are on the very opposite side by that bubble in the corner where the dwarf teen is in that room and that pink bubble is a group of 10 children. Pete, Clive and Sakura you manage to find a window on the other side of this castle belonging to Bogart Tusk that shows you where the children are being held and kept in this room. You manage to find a window. Um, it is no guards around that you can see. And uh, Cyrus, Onyx, and um, Set are keeping an eye out for you guys around the castle. On the other end, as you guys can see in this hallway in the beginning, Wendelin, Amalia, Hallman, Pippa, and Belle, you guys have entered into the front of the the castle seemingly with a child they think that they're you are there to either sell or buy or do something as the guards have seemingly let you in we're gonna just kind of skip over that little bit i would have done that but for the sake of time let's just move you guys in for the sake of time can i say what animal i am oh yeah yeah Pippa, you turned into an animal you wild shape into a poisonous animal uh, to shrink down yeah i'm gonna wild shape into the golden uh frog a uh, poison frog and i'm gonna go in amelia's pocket do you want to give him a fact about the Oh, it's one of the most poisonous animals on the planet. <laughs> what is it called? The golden? The golden frog. The golden frog. And you're just going to be in Amelia's pocket? No, well, no I protection? Think, because... I think okay. yeah, her just, skin needs to be touching. My, yeah, you have to, my, I have to make skin contact, and it's also good if I can get close to, like, you know, the, the uh, their mouths or something. It would be better. So Amelia will be fine. I won't poison Are you going to try to jump into their mouth as a frog? If <laughs> I have is, that your, is that your goal? If I have to... Hi. She's a psychedelic body. frog. Oh, yeah, my God. Get them all, get them all fucked up. All right, this is Pippa's last episode, everyone. She got eaten. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll be fine. <laughs> all right, so as you, guys, as you guys enter, I'll start with the first group. We'll get to Pippa... Oh, yeah, sorry, we'll get to uh, Clive, Soccer, and Pete in a little bit. But let's start with you, Wendelin, and Hallman. You come in with a disguised Amalia, and you happen to have an invisible bell with you, as well as Pippa, who is hiding in Sakura's, oh, not Sakura, sorry, um, in Amalia's little black, uh, red, sorry, red jacket pocket. Um, and Bell, you are invisible still, so you don't have to worry, as you're kind of just like waddling in. <laughs> you know, like, I, I like, sure oh, hope the child is with us. <laughs> okay. Yeah, let's hope, let's hope her that she's there. Oh my god. So, and even though I'm a golden poison frog, I'm still red because I'm still Pippa. Oh, my skin's still yeah, red. you're it's blood red. Yeah, yeah. Just to say, so you're not even golden. You're just I'm a, you're I'm a, frog. a red golden frog. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna be going right in here. Let's go. I'm gonna zoom in on you guys. So, Wendelin, as you enter, Hallman, Pippa, Amalia, Bell. And, uh, and uh, yeah, you guys enter this hallway. It's all, like, very brick, you know, cold and uh, gray stones all around you. The ground is moist. It's all fucking, you know, very dungeon-esque vibes. It doesn't smell good in here. Um, you guys, I don't know if any of you have been to a sex club or a strip club, stuff like that. But some of them have that rubbery type of smell, I'm sure. Maybe you guys haven't been. Maybe we're perverts. But <laughs> anywho, any, any my point is is that it, there's like a very like like sweaty, rubbery smell in the air, as well as like damp, moist rocks. Um Hallman, as you can see, as you view, as you look to, I guess, in the game, that would be to your right. Um, uh, am I correct? Maybe to your left. Either way, as you can see, there's a uh, on the screen here to your right, there is a dead woman's body. Hallman, you can immediately see as you enter this building. Her body lays there on the ground. To she is to his yeah, to, to your left, and um, she lays there. You can see that she's naked from the from the waist up. Um, and unfortunately, this woman is is dead. Uh, her eyes are open still, glossy, 
Um, and she looks like she's been through a rough time. Um, when Can I see moment, how long she's been dead? If you, would you like to do a uh, give me a medicine um, check here? Uh, Wendling, medicine is just a twelve. What'd you get? That's a twelve. That's a twelve. Wendlin, you, you give me a medicine check here too. You I are. Was gonna a, say, I have a plus seven medicine. Damn it! Please. Yeah. Wow. Oh, you braggadocious! You got another that one. You know what? You know what? You know what? I was about to say you are technically still in the under. Uh, sorry, in Red Hill. So both of you roll again. Both of you roll again. Okay. Sixteen. It's much okay, better. better. Now Jaja would be proud nineteen. Of you. Nineteen. Okay. The barbarian it. warlock is outclassing you in medicine right now. <laughs> well, let's, 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 say, let's say Wendland's got a couple of things on her mind. <laughs> she's, she's holding on to Molly. What's right? going on right now? Yeah, she's, she's trying to make sure Molly doesn't get stung by Pippa. <laughs> she's like <laughs> taking it out of her pocket. Um, so, and Bell, as you enter too, you also as as you follow behind, you don't know, you wouldn't know what would be wrong with this dead lady, Bell but you definitely see that there's a, a dead, topless woman on the ground. Uh, Belle, you're seeing a lot of adult things today <laughs> that aren't <laughs> great for a child to be seeing. From Hallman's butt cheeks to a dead lady, it's not great. Okay, the butt was her fault. I, that, that was... <laughs> That's true. That is very true. That's your fault. Um, I, want to, I want to see if I could casually go over to the dead body and cast gentle repose which means well, uh she'd be protected from decay and can't become undead okay. but if that would draw like attention i don't no. want to do that no it's, it's just in a secluded room like she's been abandoned like garbage um and her body you can tell though it is unfortunately not able to be just so you know wendelin you can tell this very much as well She's not able to be revivified or healed. She's been dead for over 24 to 48 hours, which means that her body, unfortunately, has just been sitting in this room half naked for two days. Um, the smell is starting to settle in, uh, and her, her skin is setting into rigor mortis pretty strongly. As Hallman, you can see that it's very tight and beginning to wrinkle. And then, Hallman, you still have your um, talk with animals on, right? Speak with animals? Yeah, I can't. I can still have that on. Um. So Pippa's gonna ask Hallman. Um. What about cause of death? Uh, we can infer from what 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 where she's well, at. You 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 see, and Wendelin would notice this too immediately. Even though she only rolled a sixteen, I would, I would say Wendelin would notice this as you do Hallman as well because you rolled pretty well. She died of extreme high dehydration and um, malnourishment and probably internal bleeding from the bruises that also cover her body. Um, if you guys have ever seen women that have been unfortunately, you know, um, gone through some pretty bad stuff, they have some pretty large bruises on their body. So imagine if, let's just say Bogart Tusk is a, he's bigger than Hallman. So the bruises on this woman's body are not small. Not I take out some of like the, the fabric I have from my gift maker and I just kind of like cover her whole body. Yeah, that's a nice thing to do. So for now. Bell, Peppa, Molly, you see her do this. Bell, anything you anything you want to do? No. Okay. So Bell, you kind of um, watch. <clears throat> sorry, I want to go ahead and um go. see if I can close her eyes by, you know closing her lids, um, doing a quick prayer for her as, you know, Holman's doing this and paying respects to her body. Oh, okay. So as, as you do this, Wendelin, and you kind of do this little prayer for her and everything, I want you to give me one more wisdom roll here, please. Okay. Oops. 16. Another 16. Great job. So uh as you kind of like go down and give a prayer, you see a future for this woman. Oh, shit. Strange, but you see 
gates opening flood of light immediately. Everything seems to go gentle, 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 gentle. And then all of a sudden in your head, you hear, it isn't a curse. It's a blessing. And then in this vision, you look at your own hands. And I'm going to send you a private message right now. Sorry, guys. Give me one second. Stassi gets special treatment right now. Ooh. It's okay. Yay. Huh? I tell, I, I got to start right now. I tell Pippa, like, I'm going to use this guy's tusk to drink his blood. <laughs> I think I think I think for, for Pippa would see Hallman get angrier than she's ever seen him, and it's like uh, it's not going to take a lot to set him off right now. The the, ra the rage is I'm, you know what I'm going to put you in pre rage. You don't even have to go into rage when we go into a battle uh, next time. You're in pre rage. Real you're quick, in... I'm I'm going to brb. I have to use the bathroom real quick. Sorry. <laughs> Oh, you're good. You're good. Yeah. You're good. Was, uh, um... We'll end soon here, guys, by the way, just so you know, I know it's getting a little late, so we'll continue probably the second half of this anyway, Jade, next time when we return. Uh, but great job, guys, so far, just so you know. Pippa's going to stick her little head out of Amelia's pocket, look at Holman, and tell him, take a deep breath, wait till we rage, till we can kill some motherfuckers. Right now, we can't blow our cover because stealth is the best thing we have right now to making peace. For anyone else that could be getting hurt in the side. We don't want anyone getting caught in a crossfire that doesn't need to be. Don't fucking try. Pippa just has like this big frog like breath with her little neck and then pops back in the pocket. I just so kind of look like I'm just like keeping my hands very far away from my pockets right now. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, like, <laughs> She's like. <laughs> Definitely not suspicious at all. <laughs> so, Wendelin, as you snap I'm out of your to be suspicious, but just enough to like. <laughs> just enough to be like, I'm good. <laughs> okay. Can you go to the map? Um, oh, yeah, I'll go to the map. So, Wendelin, you snap out of your vision and you look at the body. But you can at least feel relieved in some way, Wendelin, that this woman seems to have gone to a better place in, your, yes. in, in the vision you've gotten. Hello. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Anything you'd like to? Anything else you'd like to do? You, Wendy. I'm asking. Is you. she gone? Who? Wendelin. No, I think she's there. Stasi. Stasi. Hello. Here. Oh, am I frozen? Uh, no. Yeah, I think, no, you're not frozen. But are Maybe we frozen? Maybe lag. Can you hear us? <laughs> Fine, yeah, oh, back. oh, no, she's gone. <laughs> Now she's frozen. Now she's frozen. It happens to the best of us, guys. Saucy, don't worry. Come back. Come back. Hi. Yes. Hello. My internet shit you. on me. No, you're good. You're good. We can hear you. I don't know what happened. Um, um, I don't either. I came out of my vision, and that's all I heard. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, where are you? What? Uh, but, uh, what? No, that, was actually, that was brilliant. But anyway, so you come out of your vision. So anything else that you'd like to do? Because you've seen something. So... Also remember, Stassi, you were told some things about when you were coming here, so I want you to kind of take lead here. Um, as you enter this building, you pass the woman's dead body, you've said your prayer, Hallman has made her not be able to be fucked with. Um, so what would you like to do, Wendelin, as you kind of continue forward with Hallman, Pippa, and Amalia here, and Belle, who is still invisible, lurking around? Um, I, I guess we should just keep moving forward with caution. Oh, you know what? Well, Stassi, I think that you have the right idea. So uh, as a question, because we obviously like got in past the guards and everything. Um, did they give us like any direction on like, okay, take the kid down this way, or you're gonna run into? Yeah, somebody I was wondering. Or... It's a pretty uh, what? On, let's go back a little they bit. They just like let us in. Well, they just kind of let you in and open the door. Yeah, and, and and as you can see from the map here, uh, Pippa. It's a pretty straightforward shot. Like, look at that. Like, it kind of goes in, and everything else are branch off rooms. This room right here, where the knights are in, and the zombie, and the knights, it's actually in a closed off room. You can't access the door is right here, as you can see. 
and that is the door so you guys can enter it if you'd like um as you guys continue on there's another door over here with a window in it um wendelin you kind of make your way towards here and i would like you wendelin to give me a perception roll um if you wouldn't mind for me with pleasure one moment uh... Third, not one of the night. I'm going to throw you out the window. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> um, ha, it's an 18. Oh Get the fuck on him. Okay, there you go. There you go. So as you walk past this room, you hear familiar voices, Wendlin, immediately coming from this room adjacent to you. As you can see on the map, Wendlin, there's two people inside this room. You recognize these two voices immediately immediately and as you run to those two uh, that room right there i'll put it on the map as you can see as you move over basically right here to this door you look inside and in i don't know if you could read that wendelin but you see two people in there mm -hmm. which you know very well you see both your parents sitting in a room Am I going into this room? Can I go into this room? I should ask. Would you like to try? You could, would you like to try? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to try to open the door. The door is locked. It is locked. If you can, you can try, um, to, you can try to use your lock. But you, does anybody here have any lock? I could <laughs> knock on the door. That's also, oh. you know, I don't have to break in. I could see if they open it. Oh, yo, you could, you could, yeah, you, I mean, yeah, you can, yo, you want to knock on the door? Why do I have to always break in? I could also just knock. Well, Wendelin, hang on, we don't know. Where are you going? <laughs> she doesn't understand you right now. Give me, 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 give me just, give me just a minute. I heard something. Hey, Pippa's freaking out right now, by the way. You just hear, like, frog croaks, is <laughs> Wendelin knows that Pippa's trying to say something, but she's like, she, you, like, look down at a frog, Wendelin, just a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Pippo, hold on one moment. So, Wendelin, you knock on the door. About a minute goes by. Are you ready for us? Uh, hello? Hello? Raul. Mom? Dad? Are you, are you in there? Wendelin? Is that you? Raul, it's Wendy. She's trying to like jiggle the lock harder. <laughs> She's trying to like open the door. Honey, 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 it's it's locked. It's locked. We don't have the key. How can we unlock have... it? I you'll have I don't know. Do you have a key? Raul, can you unlock the door? I can't unlock the door. He he says he can't unlock the door, sweetheart. We we're locked in here. Okay, I'm gonna try to unlock the door. Um you just what do I have? Oh, right. Thank you. Like, what do I do? You're like, what do I do? What do I do? Can we all hear this? Hallman, 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 and Malia, Belle, Pippa, you guys can all see this happening, by the way. So, Belle. I don't, I don't have these tools, so I can't try to unlock it at all. Pippa's going to ask Hallman to ask her why. I got a 19 with advantage for sleight of hand. Okay, so, so you got to. That's fine. You know what? You did a good sleight of hand there. You rolled a 19. And you don't even have like the tools needed. So basically, you're just kind of like fucking around with the lock. You're basically just like shoving your fingers in there, pulling the knob, just doing the best you can to open this thing. And luckily, it wasn't shut up. It just, it's a shitty old door. It's a shitty old door. And it, it just pops open. Bah! And the door just pops open. And you see that inside is your two parents. They look kind of rather meek, slightly malnourished. They look at you. Wendelin, it's been months, sweetheart. And they come and give you a big old hug. Your mother just yeah, grabs I was like, a, I go running to them. She, they hug you. Your father goes, the hell are you doing here? What's going on? I, I could ask you the same thing. What, what's going on here? What do you, what do you mean? We're, we're coming to meet Bogart. For what? Your mother looks at you. Well, uh, you know, your brother, 
he wanted to go out and start fishing on his own, and your father needed a little bit of extra help. So, you know, with all the drow coming into the towns lately, it's just been, there's been a lot of them. And well, the neighbors, they bought a beautiful little drow elf boy, and he's been helping them with so many chores. So they gave us this location, and well, you know, we thought we could use an extra hand. Look, darling, we've, we've been fishing, and the fish have not been coming in the same. Your brother went off on his own. You know what he wants to do. I need some extra help. So I thought, a drow kid, what's the harm in that? You thought buying a child was the solution to that issue? I mean, why didn't you call Kai back? Why didn't you call me back home? Are you insane? It's, it's not a ch it's not a child. It's a drow. <sighs> Palman's about to like close the gate on the again. <laughs> on <them> again. <laughs> look, Wendell. Uh, look. No, 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 no. All the people who I look. thought. Look, you know, we know you're a little radical. We know you like to have a good time. We know you like to go out. Look, Wendelin, you've been out on your pilgrimage for a month now. You got to come home. That's why we need to get this little drow elf boy. That's why we're here. We can't do this without you. You know what it's like with the West Kingdom trying to come in and poach on all of our fish? They keep going into Goldfish Town. Every time they go there, they're poaching more fish. Your father can't keep... I can't keep doing this, Wendy. Okay, there's obviously a better solution to that than these are. I understand that you don't think that they have souls and care just like we do because they're not human. Have you ever, they met, feel. A drow? Have you ever met a drow with a soul? I have actually in the past few months. They're quite lovely people. Raul, talk sense. Gwendolyn, we like seeing you here, but you, we got to do some things. If Bogart says we can't eat for two days, we don't eat. We get the kid. We'll take good care of it. We took good care of you, right? We'll feed it. You talk about it like it's a thing and not a living being well it's not a it's not really like a normal person they're animals it's a little boy i mean would you be okay with kai when he was that young someone selling him off to i don't know if my do god, their bidding if my god told me i had to then yes i would Yes, I would. We taught you better you than that. We taught you to listen to the All Father. You have no so, idea how much of him I've been listening to, Dad. You have no idea. Look, what are you doing here? Why are you here? I'm here to save these kids. Save them from what? Bogart's working with the West Kingdom government. This is all legit. Yeah, looks real legit in here. You've got people dead, starving, malnourished, beaten, probably. You're talking about that woman in the front room. We don't know what that was about. We're not going to ask questions. Honey, and you're not worried about that happening to you? Amalia Hallman, Bell. I'm going to give you guys a moment here to interject if you'd like. Any of you? Um, one, Dylan, if we don't leave right now, I might kill your parents, and I don't want to do that to our relationship. Give us the same. Bet the croak. <laughs> <laughs> As a frog. Do what you need to do, man. But we got to save these kids. And yeah. I still might end up fighting them afterwards. I'm not going to lie. No. 
I will handle my parents later. Let's go handle this now. What? And Wait, I just give them one look of like, just disappointment. I mean, I have fear. Can I like fear them out of here? Well, you're a frog right now. <laughs> So you can't do any a of that. Terrifying frog. So uh, I mean, I can just tell I mean, them. Just you make a, a move out of the cell. I'm gonna make sure you're permanently disfigured for the rest of your life, and you won't be able to walk again. When? 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 Who are these people you're with? Who are these people that you're with? I'm gonna be your bane if you don't shut your mouth. And then I turn and leave. Wendelin, how, how are you going to let them talk to your father like this? She doesn't say anything and she just turns to leave. You want to close the door behind you as you leave or no? Oh, yeah. Can I lock them in since it was really <laughs> easy for me to um, <laughs> unlock yes. it? Well, as you did unlock it, from the front, you definitely, as you close the door behind you, they're like, wait, wait, Wendy! And then it locks back, and your parents are unfortunately locked back in their holding room. Wendelin, you then turn to face Amalia and Hallman. Belle, you are still invisible. You know, Wendelin, that Belle's been there the whole time, and Belle, just so you know, you definitely heard this conversation. Belle, they're not they're not right. None of what they said is true. Probably the most special girl in this group. Oh, little Pippa just frog croaks. <laughs> Pippa says ditto. Um, yeah, one of them's trying to kind of hold it together right now. She's... Try not to hold, or she's holding back tears, and she's like, "Well, I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry you had to hear all of that. I, I had no idea. I really didn't." Sarah, are you, are you there? Just out of curiosity. Oh, just yeah, curious. I'm here. Just checking. Bell, Bell's just quiet. Bell, invisible, quiet, not showing. Obviously, how that made her feel. Um, so you'll find out later when she's oh. not invisible. Oh, no, I love it. I love it. Keeping it a secret. All right. So, unfortunately, you guys then move on past that room, and this is where we're going to end the night. So, unfortunately, Soccer Clive, we will get back to you guys after the break because this is the last thing we're going to end with the night, guys, as you then walk past the next room, as you guys can then see here. And, by the way, Clive and, Wend and uh, Soccer and Pete will definitely get you guys as soon as we get back the week after next. We're going to start with you guys, just so you know. So, Bell. Wendlin, Hallman, Pippa, Amalia, as you guys walk up past, the, continuing down the hallway, you can see that you pass up here. I'm going to show you guys, Hallman, as you can see on the map here, you can follow as well all the way up. Um, you guys pass this next room. As you guys pass this next room, you all need to give me a perception roll, please. Last rolls of the night, if you don't mind, guys. Last rolls of the night. Hallman, I hope you get a nut one. <laughs> Listen, we just had a wonderful moment. Why do you got to ruin it? I got a 23, we're, bitch. We was what were we rolling? Perception. Perception. Pippa's like, I got a rock. <laughs> I'm in a pocket. What can I say? Bell, you're 21. 21. Do something for me. So, oh, you, so uh, Hallman and Amalia, you guys. So, Wendlin, unfortunately, you're kind of. Just your mind from what just happened is all over the place. Same with you, Belle. Your mind is not in the right space as you guys are walking past this next room. Pippa, you're a little frog. You're just focusing on not trying to fall and drown <laughs> in Amalia's pocket so much. However, Amalia and Hallman, you hear a different voice coming from another room you're passing. You hear chains rattling. You hear, help me! Fucking help me, please! Somebody fucking help me! Fuck me! Help! Fucking help me! Do I know? Do we know this voice at all, or no? No, you don't recognize it, Amalia or Hallman. Neither of you recognize this voice. It's coming from the room in front of us. 
You, it's coming from this room with this man with a pumpkin for a head, as you guys can see. Oh, turn towards the door. Hey, buddy, you, you okay? Help me, please. Help me. Uh, Listen, are you about to die? Or are you going to be okay for like 10 minutes, maybe five? Are you here to, are you here to kill the, are you here to kill Bogart? Uh, slowly. Who is you? I'm, I'm fucking Santa Claus. All right, Santa you are undercover. <laughs> I'm angry. <laughs> I'm angry right now, Molly. I'm sorry. <laughs> the name's, the name's Mayor Jack. I'm the mayor of Red Hill. All right, so were you like a good mayor or like? <laughs> Who, who's talking to me? Who are you people? I'm in this room. No, I'm just stuck in here. Who are you? Listen, listen, buddy. We'll we'll talk. We'll get you out of there if you're good. Once everything's cleaned up, just make you... sure you just make sure you remember. He loves milk. He fucking loves it. That'll help. Okay, I, I, I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna note that weird thing down. Does anyone have milk? <laughs> no, we're just gonna kill him. <laughs> <laughs> well, that'll do. Now that'll fucking do. And as you look in the room, Amalia and Hallman, you guys can see the cracks in the door and this old wooden door. You can see that inside, chained up to the wall is a very slender, very meek man, but he has a large pumpkin where his head should be. He seems to be talking out of this pumpkin. A jack-o'-lantern carved face seems to be just talking back to you. However, his arms are chained together. He is chained to the wall, and he is not able to move at all. But the pumpkin-headed man seems to be genuine, and you can see, Holman, that tears seem to be coming out of his little pumpkin eye holes. Very unnatural. But as if he's just crying out of his jack-o'-lantern face. Hang in there, buddy. Oh, oh. I'll, I'll do my best, man. Now you go kill that son bitch. You got it? You'll hear his screams. I love a good scream. And that's where we're going to end tonight's game, everybody. We're going to be back in a week after next. So please, everybody, I know we're going to have to do some changing around with this team and everything and some story plots, guys, but bear with me. I love you guys, all of you that came and played with me tonight and play with me every week. I really appreciate it. And, of course, guys, we will miss our friends, my dear friends, Jesse and Octavius, who will not be playing with us currently at the moment in time. Who knows? Maybe they'll be back to guest star on some things. I did talk to them out of this. I messaged them some stuff. We'll see what they say and if they can find some time. If not, we'll continue with this amazing group of people because you guys are awesome. And until then, let's play some D&D, everybody. Have a happy Halloween. Go get some trick or treat. Happy Go Halloween. Get some trick.